Hello dear algorithms traders, a tick chart can help us to increase profits and reduce losses at the same time. This can improve the RRR by a factor of 3 in the same trade and at the same time significantly reduce the risk per trade. In today's post we will look at which tick chart is suitable for this and which server we work best with. Many traders feel the need to look even deeper into a candle. For example, from the daily chart to the H1, from the M15 to the M1, but at the latest in the one minute chart you reach your limit. This is where the tick chart comes in handy, which can look up to 40 times deeper into the M1 candle. We take a snippet of the Euro US dollar from October 19 in M1. In 18 minutes, 18 candles were formed and using the bionic candle we were able to identify three key zones there. In the T64, 32 candles were already formed, from which four key zones could be drawn. 64 candles emerged in the T32 with seven key zones. The T16 revealed 130 candlesticks with a total of eight key zones, 261 candlesticks and nine key zones emerged in the T08 and the T04 even drew 527 candlesticks from which we were able to identify 11 key zones. In the M1, three zones were created in 18 minutes, which means a zone was created every six minutes, from which you could easily have placed a trade. In T08, there were 15 times more candles and a new zone every two minutes, which would have enabled significantly more trades. You probably all know the gripper arm machines that were particularly popular during the corona pandemic. Let's imagine three people standing in front of the same machine and allowed to play ten times. The first takes out two stuffed animals, the second three teddy bears and the third even twice as much as the first. How is that possible? Of course, this has a bit to do with luck, but there is also a strategy that can be used to increase your chances of winning. Let's look at this in the trading section. On St. Nicholas Day 2021 at 0 o'clock AM key zone was formed which reached a size of 5.1 pips. The price initially ran down and we are now going 12 hours into the future and see what happened. Around noon, the price entered this zone and was rejected down. In that first move down, a maximum of 14 pips would have been possible. As a rule, I try to enter in the middle of such a zone, but due to the spread, one is of course only executed deeper. The stop is now coming above the resistance zone, putting the risk at 4 pips. So, I am no longer able to reach a TP of 14 pip. Going back to where we started and in T16, we can now narrow the resistance zone down to 4 pips. In T08 to 2.1 pip, in T04 to 1 pip and in T02 even to 0.5 pip. Here we see the price going into the zone 12 hours later in T04 and here in T02. If the zone is so small, you should always get in at the beginning of the zone. Now let's take a look at the differences. By reducing the zones, our stop is reduced first, of course we calculate with the same spread, and this results in different loss pips in the case of a stop. At the same time, the take profit increases due to the reduction of the stops, and this leads to a different net RRR in this case. Let's now compare the M1 with the T04. In both cases, we calculate a win rate of 50% and calculate 1000 trades. First of all, it is noticeable that the profits are increasing and at the same time, the losses are reducing. It is interesting that the risk per trade in M1 is twice as high as in T04. The expected value is correspondingly higher and so is the return. The net income after taxes is twice as high at the end and amounts to almost 20,000 euros. That alone is a good reason to take a closer look at the tick chart. Here we see a normal time chart in the M5 in a range of 4 hours. The number of candles is basically always the same. In the 256 tick chart 3 times as many candles appear at the same time because the volatility was very high at that time. While there is no difference in volume, there is a difference in the number of candles. The upside, when volatility is higher, more candles are formed, and this allows us to see deeper into the market. In the usual candle chart, the time is fixed, the size of the candle and the ticks are variable. Since the time units are evenly distributed, important time zones can be compared at a glance. When there is a lot going on, many candles form on the tick chart, which gives us a better overview. 
Due to the fixed ticks and the variable time, the amount of lot released can best be estimated within a candle. With the Renko chart, the size of the candle is always the same. This allows you to filter out unnecessary sideways movements, which leads to a structured display. In the futures market, for example, there is also the volume chart, but this information is not available in the Forex market. Each individual representation always has its own advantages and disadvantages. There are different tick charts for the MT4 and half a year ago, I wrote a detailed report on my German blog. Maybe this will help you to find the best tick chart. I work with the OVO chart because it can display different tick sizes immediately without opening a new offline chart. By the way, you can download a 14-day trial version for free. I find that practical because you can use it to test whether this tick chart is of any help. The M1 chart is roughly comparable to a 64 tick chart in Eurist. With the additional tool Omnia Remote, I can double the number of ticks with a simple click and thus achieve different comparable time units. Here you can see again that the difference between the tick chart and the time chart is not that big. Since a tick chart runs in offline mode of MT4, candlesticks start drawing only when you open this chart. As soon as the chart is closed again, the display also ends. However, since I need the tick chart to narrow down resistance zones, the chart has to run 24-7. First of all, we know that Apple and Linux are significantly faster than Windows. However, there are no Apple servers, so we can only compare Windows with a Linux server here. The problem with this is that the majority of market participants work with Windows and are most familiar with this area. Let's first calculate a separate Windows server for this. Costs 1,500 euros, runs 24 hours a day and 365 days a year, amortization within 5 years, power consumption 300W per hour that is 2,630 kilowatt hours, at 46 cents per kilowatt hour that is 1,200 euro electricity costs per year. Depreciation over 5 years is 300 euros, so the total costs are 1,500 euros per year. The alternative would be a VPS Linux or Windows server. The supercomputers currently included in the top 500 list, i.e., the world's fastest systems, run exclusively on Linux. Incidentally, over 50% of all Windows servers worldwide also run on Linux. The reason is simple because Linux servers are faster than Windows servers. On average, the Linux servers have a speed advantage of 30 to 60%. On my Linux server, my tick chart requires 189 megabytes of RAM and even 565 megabytes under Windows. We are now renting a 10-core Windows VPS server for 70 euros a month and comparing it to a 6-core Linux server. Since the Windows server has more RAM and a larger hard drive, we deduct another 10 euros per month. This means that the Windows server is 720 euros per year and that is already a saving of 50% compared to your own Windows server. In Germany there are different VPS providers with different services and prices. My VPS Linux server costs about 10 euros a month and I am absolutely satisfied with it. I chose Contabo in Munich because they were recommended by many traders and have a lot of experience in this area. Nevertheless, I advise you to compare the services. Even if I sometimes name certain manufacturers or companies in my videos, I have no intention of advertising them and I don't get any money from these companies either. Basically, I recommend each of you to carry out a detailed comparison on the internet to find the best value for money. We have now compared the three different options and have achieved a maximum saving of up to 90%. It makes a difference whether I pay 125 euros or just 10 euros a month. However, there are some special features of the Linux server that are not very easy. When you access your server for the first time, you will automatically be confronted with such lines of code. But at first glance, this looks more difficult than it actually is. To start, I'm working with PuTTY to access my server. There I first install XFCE, which is a Linux desktop that is similar to the Windows interface. Then we still need XRDP which is based on an X windows system server. This enables graphical user interfaces and the connection via the remote desktop. Finally, we need WineHQ, which is a kind of emulator to make Windows programs run on Linux. The computer is now restarted via the VPS control, and you can already see the new Linux desktop when it starts up. 
I then installed Firefox on this desktop. The MT4 was then downloaded via my broker and installed on the Linux server. I can now access my server directly via the Windows program WinSCP and store my indicators in the correct program directory. Then everything has to be set up and the tick chart is already running, which will help us in the future to reduce resistance zones. It should be noted that various settings must be made in the MT4 so that 2 to 5 million candles are available and the MT4 always unfolds its full performance. An inexperienced user needs about 8 to 12 hours to set it up, although you will definitely need help from the internet here. If you don't feel like it or don't have the time, let someone who knows how to do it do it for you. That will cost you maybe 200 to 400 euros. If you don't know anyone who can help, just post a free ad on my hammer or classifieds. Even if you have to pay 200 to 400 euros to set up the server, the costs will have been amortized after half a year and you will save a lot of money over the next four and a half years. By the way, a little tip, download the free OBS recording program. With it you can record your trading screen and watch the most interesting things live again in the evening. With the help of a Linux VPS server, you will be able to look even deeper into the candle in the future and thus reduce resistance zones more efficiently. You also save a lot of electricity costs, which is unfortunately important these days. The main reason I manage my Linux server myself is because I want to be independent and it has nothing to do with saving money. Incidentally, people who earn an above average income are only financially independent because they spend less money than they earn. That's why you're all the happier about the savings. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you in the trade and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again soon. Best regards Michael.